Hi everyone, and welcome to a short introduction to Node.js event loop video. I'm your host, Alex Kordjikov, and I'm gonna guide you through a small set of examples that we prepared for today. Let's begin. Hey, first things first, uh, we're gonna talk today about event loop and uh, what is event loop in Node.js? Well, that's a program that uh, basically runs in a, in a background of Node.js and uh, with, the, with this program, you can subscribe to the different system events and uh, you're gonna subscribe with a callbacks API that is provided by Node.js. So when Node.js process starts, event loop is initialized and then it goes through your script execution to uh, through all the calls of APIs that are used like set timeouts, like process, process next ticks and many, many other things. So it executes them directly, immediately, and if it sees any asynchronous operation to be made, like a, again, set timeout, then event loop starts working basically. It schedules a callback that will be executed at some point of time in the future. Let's have a look at the first example of just a simple HTTP server. So imagine I have a, a file in here, like a HTTP server.js file, and uh, that is that one is a uh, creating a simple HTTP server. And by the way, this is a basic example taken from the official documentation of Node.js. So Node.js.org. When I execute it on the, on the right time, on the right panel in the, in the screen, I'm gonna just call node and then HTTP server.js and uh, then a server is running on port 3000. I could just go to the browser directly and uh, see the request in there, but let's uh, let's take it from the terminal instead. So I'm, I'm gonna call HTTP server in a background mode. So now the server is still running and I can show you that with a CURL command or curl command. I'm gonna do it like that and minus V, minus V flag shows more log, so it's more verbose. So it shows me that a hello world response was, um, was sent back when I just requested a local host on port 3000. And in this example, you can see a few callbacks already done. Well, first of all, and let's begin with the first uh, first line in here, it does require a call on the HTTP built-in model. And um, exceptionally, or maybe not not as, a, as expected as it could be, require function is a part of a common JS model system in Node.js, and uh, that one is done synchronously. So it, it will not go to the next line until uh, the, the full request to file system is finished. But we can see the create server call later and then server listen function called um, in, the, in the next line. The, those two lines basically create an instance of HTTP server running. And each one of them is a synchronous uh, function that is uh, provided by Node.js API. The second one, server.listen, is a um, is a callback based API function that uh, will be, will execute our callback, which in, in this case is a console log to server running. Uh, and then this callback will be executed as soon as a resource, or in this case, a port will be opened on a system. So Node.js will be immediately notified and our callback will be called uh, at, at that point. And the, the other callback from the first example is this one uh, that takes two arguments, request and response will be executed each time uh, after the um, a server takes a request or uh, takes a request gets a request from a client and then we, using the api we can send the uh, response back to a client which in our case is a hello world example then you might ask yourself like which model is inside the node.js are using event loop and those are all of the models of Node.js, like built-in models, and we already saw an HTTP example, but there are much more, around 50 public models available, and uh, almost every, each one of them, maybe except some utilities models, are using event loop for, uh, for one or the other resource that can be, can be um, used as a, with a callback attached to it. So models like FS, like DNS, and uh, crypto, and many, many others. And in this example, you see I'm using the FS model. So I read the file events.js. And by the way, that file 
might exist or not exist in a system, this callback will be executed anyway. So I tell Node.js, hey, whenever you can uh, read the file or maybe the file doesn't exist in there, please come get back to me and tell me uh, about it with a callback. And that's, that's how in nutshell event driven paradigm is uh, used inside applications. So we saw it a lot in the front end world and also it is available as is in Node.js. And next is the phases available in, in uh, Node.js event loop. And those are timers, painting callbacks, idle, prepare, poll, check, close callbacks. Well, most interesting for us are timers, prepare, poll and uh, check phases. Well, timers uh, is a phase when callbacks from set timeout or set interval, set interval function are executed. And then painting callbacks um, for almost uh, built-in function callbacks uh, so, yeah, painting callbacks, idle prepare phases, maybe those are used a lot by system, but not by Node.js developers. So, poll next phase is a phase when uh, all input op output operations binded or linked um, callbacks are called. Imagine I, I have read a file in a, a previous example and that a callback to, uh, to this operation was executed at this stage, at the poll stage. And the next one is a check, very interesting, but uh, it's uh, mostly used for with a set immediate API of Node.js. And uh, what is this set immediate? Let's have a look. Well, set immediate is another function that provide provided in Node.js and a special kind of timers that uh, we can specify a callback to. So the syntax is very simple. It's almost like set timeout, but uh, you don't have to specify a, a, a amount of uh, milliseconds to wait until the callback will be executed. So it schedules callback on a, like we said, in a check phase of a callback loop, of an event loop callback loop. And whenever this phase comes into play in a Node.js, then a callback from um, that was scheduled before will be executed immediately. Now let's have a look at the complex example. So how do you think what would be the output of the following code? Uh, well, it's a tricky question. Let's go one by one. So let's start with our first line. And that one again is a common JS call to uh, to a model called FS. We saw it before. So that's, that's, uh, this call is, um, is this invocation is synchronous. And the next we see the set timeout and set immediate. And uh, those two are scheduling um, um, some callbacks that will be executed after, after some point in time. Then we see a read file operation again, and, uh, and we define a new function next, which will be called with process next tick. Well, that's interesting, and it's already more than we mentioned before. So next tick is another asynchronous operation, and uh, I call it um, a simplest or the, or the fastest way to, pro to set a asynchronous callback outside of event loop in Node.js. Why is that? Because the next tick is a special operation that is executed after each after uh, each phase is done, so after each phase, any um, any set of callbacks that was provided by the next tick will be invoked one by one until the queue is is free or until the Node.js limit is reached. So um, what happens next? Well, and that's again as as I told you, it's a tricky because actually this example will not run or will run with some uh, with some. Um, with some uh, failure or mistake or how how you gonna how you gonna name it? Oh, let me show you what I mean by that. So the file is called event loop. Let's have a look. It's the same code in here. And then I just type node event loop, and that will run my file in here. And what we see is a, a, a infinitive uh, number of uh, next messages in a console. And uh, here is why it's uh, happening is because uh, in inside the callback of a process next tick, I call, I, I schedule another callback for the exactly the same, uh, for the exactly the same. Uh, um, uh, period or time in a time when the next tick callbacks are executed. So it will never leave this, uh, this part of the event loop and our program unfortunately is completely cycled. So uh, let's quickly fix it and that is uh, easy. We just uh, comment or remove this line with the process next tick. And now if we run it again, we will see a totally different result. We see that it's 
Actually, uh, the first one is a next, then timeout out, immediate out, FS next in, immediate in, and timeout in. Why is that? Well, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned before, the process next tick is the fastest way to execute a callback outside of event loop. So that's uh, as it's faster, uh, we see the, this message first. And then comes time, style, time, time out, out and immediate out. And with that one, uh, it's, uh, it's also very tricky because event loop, um, uh, not just uh, official documentation or guide, uh, the nice article that is uh, in the official site, uh, says that it's actually non-deterministic which order would be first uh, for timeout or immediate. So we can say that we don't know when the event loop starts on which phase it will execute uh, first callback. So it can be timeout out, immediate out, up to your process um, or up to your operational system and the machine. It all depends on that. But the next, uh, next messages are totally deterministic. Let's see. First one, we read the file, and again, that can uh, can be in the file system or not. That doesn't matter for us, and we even omit the arguments, which is error and the date of a file. So next is gonna uh, gonna print the fs uh, fs message to the console, and this operation is completely synchronous. And then again, we see these three calls: next tick, set timeout, and set immediate. So next tick is uh, the fastest one. We kind of um, uh, called it the fastest one. So apparently we will see it uh, the first and we see it uh, in the log as the first one next in and then set timeout and set immediate. And maybe you will uh, you will say or will think that uh, this is um, again non-deterministic, but in this case, and let's back to our event loop phases diagram, we see that uh, this poll phase uh, which um, which is a callbacks to which I executed after the uh, operation of input output is done. So when our file was uh, read in the previous example, then it will output the FS message to the console. And this indicates that it's a poll phase currently running. And after that, we see a check phase and a check phase is specifically for immediate set immediate um, callbacks based um, um, that will be executed. So it's the next one. And that means that immediate will be first before timeout because timeout is the next next cycle of the event loop. That's it. Well, that's that's it with the example. And thanks for watching and I hope you like it. A few links, uh, that's, those are all from the official guides of Node.js. So Node.js.org, you can find lots of really nice information and article in there. So thanks and join our full stack JavaScript developer bootcamp. See you. Bye.